Okay, so Pi News episode 51, and I'm using my Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig for this 64 bit Raspberry Pi OS with the Twister OS theme, uh, and I'm using the Windows 10 theme for this. So, first up, we had a story from Pharonix further investigating the Raspberry Pi 32 bit versus 64 bit. So, from I think it was last Pi News, uh, there was a story, loads of speed tests, and loads of information on 64 bit versus 32 bit. Well, they've done much more extensive tests. And uh, if we have a look at the second page, and I'll put a link in the description of this if you want to go through it in detail. Number of first place finishes. So 128 individual tests, 64 bit, uh, 110, and 32 bit had 18. So uh, yeah, really, really good results. It's really showing that 64 bit definitely works better on the Pi. I did have an instance the other day where I was trying to use uh, 32 bit Raspberry Pi OS to copy over a 4.7 gig file to my NAS drive and it kept failing. I switched over to 64 bit and it worked absolutely fine. So as you can see, loads of graphs, loads of information, loads and loads of tests. But uh, yeah, definitely looking good for 64 bit. Next up on Raspberry Pi and DIY project on Facebook, Ashley Ackley. Hi y'all, I finished my Ultimate Pi some time ago but never talked about it. It's an 8 gig Pi 4, deleted with a crazy Ice Tower cooler stack. And uh, I was hoping to see pictures of it deleted, but uh, unfortunately because it's got the Ice Tower cooler on it, you can't tell that it's been deleted. Um, but it did uh, remind me that I'd seen this before. Uh, you can see if we zoom in, uh, it's running on battery powers. Uh, I question whether you need to delid uh, a Raspberry Pi 4 when you're using an Ice Tower cooler, and especially if you're using the fan as well. I generally use the ice tower cooler without a fan uh, and overclock to around about 2.2 uh, on Twister OS and uh, yeah, it runs great for me. But the other story says it's from three years ago, this uh, deleted Raspberry Pi 4. And if we click on Imager, you can see here what it looks like. So this is the CPU uh, without the uh, aluminium top on it. I guess it's aluminium, um, but uh, the metal top on it, it's just another option. Uh, for trying to get better cooling. Here you can see there's some, some thermal paste in there and uh, what looks like some sort of, I guess that's glue around there uh, that was holding it in place. But yeah, I wouldn't say it was worth it. Um, but uh, it's an interesting story and uh, it's just nice to see people experimenting with things. Next up again from Raspberry Pi and DIY projects, there's a Thingiverse link. So this is a 3D printed so kind of retro case uh, for a Pi 4. I think it's a Pi 4 in there. You can see it's got some full-size HDMI's on the back, USB-C, Ethernet, uh, the ordinary USB 2 and USB 3 connections, and a little opening there for the fan. Uh, I've opened the link already, so there's other pictures of it here with a small monitor and the keyboard and mouse. And if we flick through, little button on the front with a little uh, status light. I like the um, SD card, full-size SD card slot with a little micro SD, so it looks a bit more like a floppy disk. You can see there's a lot of cabling inside. It's uh, it's certainly crammed in there. I don't know how well it cools uh, like that, but let's have a look at a few of the other pictures. So there's two fans in there. Uh, so you can see the uh, this one blowing it out and this one coming off the CPU. Always like to see these pictures of the insides. Yeah, very nice. And some 3D printing uh, pictures here as well. Looks pretty decent. Now we also saw this come up uh, in my feed. Uh, so Chipsy uh, have come up with uh, a desktop computer based on a Compute Module 4. I did a video recently on the Compute Module 4 running with Berry Boot, so multi-boot operating systems, and I thought it went really well. I see they're running Android on it. I haven't tried Android on my Compute Module 4 yet, uh, but that'll be interesting to try. Uh, so it's, it's a fully finished desktop computer, so if you have a look at the back of it, uh, well it doesn't, no, that one doesn't really show the connectivity on it. This one at the base of the monitor does. So a couple of USB 3s, USB-C, full size HDMI. Uh, so I suppose you can do that with dual monitors. GPIO pins, it's nice to see that they're all there. Uh, and so you'd use like a breakout cable like this one if you wanted to use the GPIO pins. But I just thought it looked pretty cool. And I have covered in Pi News 27, they do a, a tablet based on the Compute Module 4 but it's not in that section. But if you have a look at Pi News 27, uh, if you want to know any more about that, and you can also have a pre-installed operating system look. So you can choose what you have. So Android 11 and Compute Module 4, you can pick your different options, whether you want two gig, four gig, uh, whether you want it to have any MMC drive. 
And this one, not necessarily Pi related, but it was on Hacker Day. And uh, tiny Ethernet cable arms race spawns from Reddit discussion. And uh, you can see here, there is uh, well about two and a quarter inches a Ethernet cable, which is in itself pretty short. But then <laughs> clearly the winner is this, which is just two plugs together. Uh, and that that is, yeah, that must have taken some doing. I don't know even how you would begin to make that, but uh, that's pretty impressive. I'll put a link in there if you want to read more about the story. Next up is a very interesting blog by Jeff Geerling. But before I talk about that, uh, I want to say thanks to Jeff Geerling for uh, mentioning me to the Raspberry Pi Foundation and suggesting I was part of the Alpha program. And uh, I've now signed up to be part of the Alpha program. So what that means is that I should get some new products and new software to test early. Obviously, I can't talk about it in Pi News. I haven't got anything yet. Um, but when I do get things, I have to keep it secret. Uh, but uh, obviously, as soon as I'm allowed to reveal things, I will. But thanks very much, Jeff, for that. Uh, I can't wait to see these new products start coming through. Uh, so gaming at 1080 and 120 hertz on Raspberry Pi 4. So it had a nice 144 hertz monitor. And uh, the good thing about this is it goes through loads of different settings. Uh, you, you certainly notice when you scroll, uh, so if I scroll now, it's not particularly smooth. Uh, I mean, my monitor is only a 60 hertz monitor anyway, but uh, he actually upped it to 120 hertz and also did some gaming tests as well. Uh, and there's loads and loads of information. I won't go through all of it, but uh, yeah, very interesting. Also shows you at the bottom, if you're interested in installing uh, Quake 3, there's uh, instructions on how to install Quake 3, which runs really well on the Pi. I did actually um, try out Half-Life, uh, which was on Pi Kiss and got that beyond 100 FPS, but then my monitor's not beyond 100 FPS. The game ran incredibly well. Next up from Raspberry Pi News, uh, we're really pleased to announce the very first preview of the Pi Camera 2 Python library, the replacement for the Pi Camera library deprecated during the release of Bullseye back in November. So if you use a camera with your Pi, uh, this will definitely be good news to you, and it'll be worth checking out all the new things that will come through on it. Saw this on the Discord from Jose, creator of PyKiss. There's much better 64-bit support. So new RetroArch Core 64-bit. Uh, you can see various different things in here. And also some games. So you can see Grand Theft Auto 3 gets 64-bit support. So that should run even better, even though it ran really well before. So great work by Jose. I know he's been working on the 64-bit for 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, as also has BotSpot for Pi apps as well. So all the 64-bit stuff is getting better all the time. From ZDNet, uh, programming language, here's how Raspberry Pi is creating a new generation of Python developers. I wanted to try uh, that Pi game. I need to have a look at it and uh, have a little play around with it. I don't do any programming. But um, but yeah, really interesting story here. And also if it takes you to a link, uh, if you've got kids or even if you just want to get into programming, it's worth having a look. These articles are really, really well done and uh, takes you through all the basics. And uh, nice to see more young people getting into programming. Next up, a really cool creation on Reddit. Made my son his first computer, a Pi 4B running the main system on Endless OS with two Pi 02s for the smaller screens. And if we have a look at the pictures, the finish on this is really nice. Uh, it, just, it just looks really cool. And I thought of it as being very James Bond and also other people had said the same. So you can see this keypad here, uh, another display, couple of speakers. And there's loads more information in the story. I won't go through it, but it's uh, yeah definitely worth a read. Yeah, really nice to see something so different and uh, and so well finished as well. It's a really nice project that one. And thanks to Keith Taylor for emailing this story to me. GNOME Dynamic Triple Buffering can two times the desktop performance for Intel Graphics and Raspberry Pi. GNOME's dynamic triple buffering is to dynamically enable when the previous frame is running behind schedule. Ultimately, this extra work will cause GPU clock speeds to rise and in turn help with performance to ensure the desktop can render at the full frame rate. As for the benefits you're seeing out of it, I see the performance improvement with every driver but major improvements doubling frame rates on Intel GPUs and Raspberry Pi. So this could be very good news. This computer showed up all over the place. DIY mini laptop powered by a Raspberry Pi 02W. I'm a big fan of the Raspberry Pi 02W. The performance is, is surprisingly good for the price. So a 7.9 inch widescreen display, really nice looking keyboard, and all the information is on the creator's GitHub page. And if we scroll down, there's some really nice pictures of all of the construction and everything and all the information. Yeah, very, very fancy looking. This is a cool one. Uh, so Raspberry Pi RP2040 gains an extra USB port through PIOs, programmable IOs. 
And there's an interesting video to go with it, which is showing all the extra devices being used. So I'll leave a link to this in the description if you want to try this yourself. This is a cool video. So Plottybot uh, basically creates handwriting. So Ben Ekren created the incredible Plottybot to get out of handwriting tons of Christmas cards. This pen plotter can do much more than scribe season's greetings. So Plottybot is controlled via a simple web interface and can be calibrated automatically or manually. It can work on complex, hour-long plots without missing a step, as well as smaller projects. The design features a rotatable pen holder so you can use it with various tools. And uh, if we scroll down, there's loads of pictures and loads and loads of information. And it says in here, uh, this project also comes with the best step-by-step -step walkthrough we've ever seen. Ben uploaded tons of photos and videos showing how each 3D printed piece fits together and where to solder every single line. So yeah, super impressive. Another Pharaonic story, uh, Raspberry Pi's Vulcan driver likely to see better performance this year. So we've already had the better performance earlier on. So if we scroll down, uh, so future plans, continue adding extensions and features, maybe start experimenting with FP16, resume performance work, improve kernel interface, and maybe start work on Vulcan 1.2. So should mean better performance on games and emulation in the future on the Raspberry Pi. And last up, the courier has just dropped this off uh, from Dixon Industries. And uh, it's a Raspberry Pi 4 case. So if I scan the QR code, and let's go straight to that, open in Safari. You can see we've got various instructions on how to install it. It's a passive case. I really like passive cases. It's got a very nice big heat sink on it. And uh, I'll be putting this together in a separate video. But yeah, it looks, looks very straightforward to put together. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.